This is episode 218 of the Inner Fight Podcast. This is it, we're back again. Welcome back to another edition of the Inner Fight Podcast. I've got the coaches here. Phil, hey. 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 Oh, hey. hey. You're not blocking Ben out. Ben, special guest. You boy. Everything. Hair, <laughs> chest. D. D. Jonesy. Hi. Relaxed. Very relaxed. Good to have you today. Yeah. No photo shoot, no modeling, and no, no, no shit no. haircuts. <laughs> no shit haircuts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boz? Hello. You okay? Yes. Very Mommy's leaving? Yeah. Very Are you sad? sad. Very Should we have a party tonight? No. <laughs> like to make you feel better, not to celebrate. Oh. No, let's not have a party No, I'm not going to have a party. Party Folks, is done now. <laughs> welcome. To what? You're resting Phil. now. Yeah, I'm resting We'll now. talk about your party <laughs> later and what uh, what Phil Hesketh has to say about that. I'm sure he has some, <laughs> something to say. Something yeah. always has something to say, something doesn't he? Sixteen point five. The CrossFit Open for 2016 is over. Jonesy, what <laughs> was the workout? Trusters. Trusters. Thrusters. No, it was uh, thrusters. <laughs> yeah. And uh, bar facing burpees again. Again. For no reason at all. Two years later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, two years later. 14.5. 14.5. Last workout. Reps. 21, 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, I should give you a massive round of applause every single week. You've got the workout absolutely correct. Thank you very much. It was <laughs> and he gets all the old Good. ones, right? Yeah. Um, weights. Uh, so 43 kilos for the guys, 95 yep. pounds, and um, 29. 29.6. 29. <laughs> for the girls. By the way, if you're joining us live, Good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. There are some people, four or five. Anton, please don't ask any questions that it would be unprofessional for us to answer. They're already, they're already coming in. They're already <laughs> coming in. Yeah. If you want one of your questions answered, just tap it straight in there. And if you don't know what we're talking about, if you listen in iTunes, you can always watch live on Spreecast as well. Inafi.com slash podcast live every Thursday Dubai time, which is GMT plus four. Ben, first thoughts on the workout when you saw it. Did you do it in 2014? I did, yeah. Um, um, it was, I was very nervous. For very this one? Nervous. Nah, you weren't nervous. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, t- we'll explain what happened. <laughs> How did you get on in 2014? Uh, I got 12-14. 12-14, wow. Yeah. I wow. did it twice. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> did you get better Only the second twice? time or? I got better the second, second time. time yep. Did you do it back to back, seconds. like twice, back to back? One as a warm up, yeah. and then one <laughs> real deal. Well, this time, <laughs> <Practice> <laughs> the whole run. practice run. <laughs> it just run. went all the way through. But when it came up again, mate, were you happy? I mean, that's something that you don't mind. Thrusters, burpees, you can go fast, you can get tired. Yeah, I, it was just one of those where you, you've got to go. You, you, there's no kind of time to rest, there's yeah. no strategy. You just have to go as hard as you can. Yeah. Jonesy, you did it in 2014. Yeah. Happy with that it came up again. A 17 <laughs> second increase. Or yeah, everyone gets like a two to seven minute better time. Yeah. I'm here with my 17 seconds. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm happy I beat my time. Phil, Phil Hesker's training program. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Works. Yeah, yeah, works so. <laughs> Didn't follow yeah. it. Did you uh, follow it? For three months. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, were no, you ha- I mean, happy it was, when it came out, mate? Oh, Decent yeah, I workout. saw it. Good I wanted, finish. Yeah, I was hoping for like, because all the workouts seemed to be different this year. I was yeah. thinking there's going to be something different. But yeah. So when I sort of heard what it was, I was like, oh, this again. But um, I was very surprised that it burpees twice. Yeah, yeah. well, that too. Two lots of know? burpees. I did yeah. say in my seminars that burpees were going to come back with a vengeance. With that a vengeance. That was my quote. Mm. So Maybe they thought that the first workout, people just didn't do enough rounds. And so they needed to do more. What? Is it 80, 84, right? 84 oh. reps? Yep. Yep. So the 21 down to three gets 84 thrusters and 84 burpees. Mia? Oh, yeah. First thoughts, <laughs> and then we'll yeah. speak about your other <laughs> thoughts after. What were your first thoughts? Did you do the workout in 2014? Yeah, I did. And It took me uh, 14 minutes something. Right. Wow. Yeah. So you were looking forward to this? <laughs> yeah, I was very excited. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Not at all? Not at all. Really? No. Nah. But we, talk, we spoke about it last week. We knew that thrusters was going to be something that came up. What did you ask for last week? I said One box jumps thrusters. overs. Yeah. No, I said thrusters and box jumps overs. That's so similar. Yeah. Just the burpees. I wouldn't be happy with I that. Prefer, just was what my thought come up. It's just what you <laughs> didn't wish for that. We'll speak about how it went for you. But first, Boz, you were straight out the blocks Friday morning. I yes. know you had social plans Friday night, yes. Saturday night. You were like yawning just Wednesday before Wednesday you were doing it. Yeah, you were like sure. training someone yawning. I was like, but then you got a sick time. Yeah, I didn't well warm up. I just yeah. said, oh, I want to get this over with. And 
I, I pushed really hard now when I yeah. know there's like a reward after. And then you the theme for that. <laughs> 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 so th- different people motivated by different things yeah. and yeah. you were just Appreciate excited because you're going partying. Actually, yeah, you were, you I was excited because away. my friends were, were coming over and I just really knew I had to smash it once yeah. because I know if I had to do it on Monday again, it would really be bad. Yeah. yeah. And was it bad the first time though? Well, you mean like the first time the, I did no, it? No, the workout when you did it on Friday. No, it was really good. Like, I surprised myself. I went, I thought like, okay, just go full retard from the start and just try to keep it. <laughs> and I, yeah, I kind of did incredible. that. Uh, like, really? I yeah. was surprised myself. And Phil and Mia and I think Scott was there too. And they were just saying. No, Scott wasn't there. No, he wasn't there. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was. He was. He was. <laughs> okay. And the, they Scott were saying like. They, they were surprised too. And yeah, they we just got quite, really uh, excited. Yeah. I was so Halfway yeah. through. I, after the first round, I said, like, oh, my God, is this the pace I, I'm going to keep? I don't know. I was, like, talking to myself, like, no, no, you just keep going. Just smash it. Yeah. And it's then, really cool. And then I did it. So I was really happy yeah. with Very it. Very good. Nine twelve. Yeah. Wow. It's cool. 90 seconds improvement since two months ago we were on a camp in Iceland. Yeah. And we had to do yeah. it there, too. Wow. And I did only 10 seconds faster than my 14th, the 2013 time. Yeah. So, so 90 seconds. 90 seconds number. almost, yeah. So all that morning cardio that you do, all that stuff yeah. that you really used to hate. It pays it off. It pays off. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I always would go full retard from the start, but my conditioning would have never yeah. Yeah. keep up with it. So I would just burn out. And that's put you third yes. after the end of the Open. Yeah. So you're third in Africa. Do you know where that would have put you, where you'd have finished approximately in Europe? or did uh, No, I didn't do it yet, the map, but it doesn't matter. I made it. But Somebody said I made yeah, it. Yeah, my friend David who's here, he's really geeky. So yeah. he checked that both me and Karma would have qualified in Europe as well. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Let's talk about you, oh, Mia. Yeah. You've done this workout twice. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so funny. <laughs> this is the M- third Mia workout. Mia is twice and done. <laughs> twice and done. <laughs> no, but two of the workouts you only did once. Yeah. And three of them you did twice. Yeah. What happened in the first workout? Saturday? <laughs> Saturday. Everyone here to support you. Everyone is Long here. warm up. Yeah, <laughs> long warm up. All prepared. Done nothing the whole morning. Just yeah, focus just on the workout. Just focus on the workout. Gets really stressed. And... Um, I don't know. I, I remember like during the round of 18, yeah. I was really tired. <laughs> and all the people you're sharing and like, come on, come on, go, go, go. And, yeah. and all I can think of like, oh, shut up, shut up. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was so hard. Just and then Phil went super fast. Yeah. And yep. I guess I get super distracted. It's and yeah. all your like, fault, Phil. No, yeah. but like <laughs> we talked about it after and it seems like the work as I read it was the ones I did against Carmen and Phil. Yeah. And if they get ahead of me, I think just like gave up right like I thought I thought I pushed hard on Saturday because I was so tired after and I was like Carmen was really mad at me and said what are you went so slow (laughs) went so slow what are you doing (laughs) and yeah and I said oh I'm just not fit enough this is the best I can do she was like no you're fit in this you can do much better like no I can't this is all I had and you came in on Monday yeah and you trained like mental for those days and you got super fit and you did it again yeah you didn't just 90 seconds for two days faster. And you go 90 seconds faster yeah. on your own. Actually, there were some people in the background making a movie, but you didn't know they were there. Yeah, I was kind of distracted by that before. <laughs> I told Phil I can't go if they are going to be here in a photo shoot and everything going to distract me. He's like, no, you're not going to get distracted by that. <laughs> and you finished up with 9.46. Wow, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and that secured your place fifth in this Africa region, yeah. so you qualify easily yeah. for regionals two girls yeah. first time we've had one girl I would first have time we've had two girls as oh. well yeah. Yeah. double trouble I would have qualified with the first time I got I would oh end would up, you yeah I would end up 10th okay but Oof. this is much better a little bit now, touch and go yeah but now for the next time it comes up thruster and burpee workout I know I can push harder can push yeah and with, to be honest was that the only difference I mean obviously I was joking you didn't do much training in those Not, days nothing. you didn't get any fitter this is sort of more the the, the real part of it isn't it like yeah. but you went 90 seconds faster what is it what's the difference it's just the mental in my head right like when it started to hurt so you just need to push harder and I was actually thinking, like, p- probably the first round or maybe round of 18 again. Yeah. I was a bit weak. I was like, right. oh, no, I'm not recovered. I'm too tired. My, my yeah. body's not recovered yet. 
And then I was just thinking of all you guys around me, like, no, they're here, they're supporting me, they really believe I can do this, I, I really can do this, come on. And bang, yeah. 90 seconds improvement. Ben, I want to, Phil, you're here, but it's okay. No one cares. You're <laughs> <laughs> actually, you're in this next part, because, okay. <laughs> Ben, your warm-up on Saturday was yeah. just, Childish. just sensational. <laughs> like, just talk ridiculous. us through, like, what time did you start warming up, and well, the warm how up did was you warm up? 30 minutes longer than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> started warming up before I did. It yeah. clearly said your name was in the third heat. Right. Yeah. Warming up before you started I started doing each thrusters. Week, I, li- I like each a, I like a good warm up. Yeah, <laughs> I like making sure I'm warm. Just doing like 80 <laughs> kilo heavy thrusters. thrusters. Yeah. Yeah. But the last part of the warm up was just the best, and you, you just didn't know that this was going on at all. No. So. Phil was judging his sister, sister, who he was. You were very mean to her. No, I get, I get accused of being bad to yeah. Holly, but that, well, the, you were laughing at her. <laughs> you were publicly <laughs> disgracing <laughs> her. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. working hard enough at some stages. Right. She, she used to just stop and talk to me for a bit. I was like, you, "This really isn't what you're supposed to be doing." <laughs> so, she, she was, she what was it? At about 16 minutes. Everyone else in that heat. She went in the second heat, and everyone else in that heat had finished. And you said to me, "I'll put another clock on so the next heat can go." Yeah. And I said, no, <laughs> she should finish. <laughs> this time, what were you doing, Ben? <laughs> By this time, I, I thought we were going to be starting. But we were still <laughs> 10 minutes from starting. <laughs> so I'd done my prep. I'd done my two 30-second sprints on the rower, ready, and, yeah, still waiting. I'm still waiting. <laughs> and actually, I was sat watching Phil's sister do the workout and... <laughs> <laughs> laughing you, you kept on yeah, doing he just, said to, he just said to me like look how stressed Ben's look getting how <laughs> I, mean, I looked over and you were like pacing up and down pacing. and then you do like three burpees really really just fast like <laughs> randomly and then you're like okay oh, yeah I can still do Stop. burpees <laughs> I can still do them and then you pick up the barbell do re- three really fast thrusters yeah. like, oh, I can God. still do them I can still do them yeah. so bad I, I, then I think he, I said to Phil what's she on now and he said oh she's on the nines I was like, oh my god there's so much time you every two. time he, she kept getting to four I was like, she's, she must be on the three. Yeah, she yeah, must yeah. Be on. Like, and she was going down for another burpee. I'm like, oh, my oh God. My <laughs> God. <laughs> what number is she on now? Absolutely incredible. Well, mate, it was, uh, didn't affect your performance. We'll talk about that. Phil, immediate thoughts when it came out? Uh, oh, no, Marcus beat me in this in 2014. Yeah, well, <laughs> just, no, I actually didn't. Like, it, oh. It's probably something that I, sh- I should, like, I, I hated this workout in 2014. I right. absolutely hate it. I know the first thought when it came out then was that, like, this is going to be so bad. It's yeah. like so many burpees and I'm not good at it. Yeah. And that's the first thing I said was like, I'm just going to absolutely smash it. The same as I did last year at the end of the bit. Like, it's all easy, about men- yeah, mental attitude. Like, yeah. it's really, when everyone said, oh, what do you think about this? Like, there's, there's nothing that can go wrong. Yeah. It's burpees and light thrusters. There's not really much like, to think about, like, is there? There's no skill. Yeah. There's no, there's, there's nothing. You just have to move as fast as you can. Yeah. For nine minutes. For as long as you can. Yeah. What time did you end up with? 8.41. From 11.30 Four. in 2014. Yeah, I got a lot fitter. Decent decent improvement. Yeah. It's good that you're following Matt Jones' training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I my think you've done my, your uh, job. Life, life coach. Yeah. Life Matt coach. Yeah. Mentor, you were sending messages straight away in the morning, right? Just getting me ready for it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you sent me nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was still here within an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw you. That's you were judging what? someone. Judging Lizelle or something. Judging Lizelle, that no. was enough. Oh, on Friday, yeah. yeah, yeah. But all she actually, I think you should actually mention Lizelle. Like, she came in. I think we should mention uh, everyone, ev- yeah. Ev- Friday Friday morning, like 8 a.m. every week, and just, yeah, just got on with it on her own, like a trooper. Yeah. yeah and just absolutely yeah, loved it. Did. So, yeah. I think that's really, a, really cool that she did that every every week. Every yeah. week. And I think massive congrats to everyone, really, that, that did it. Yeah. Not not here, especially, obviously, we love everyone that comes and, 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 and works out here. And the sort of 40 people that, that took part and actually made our lives quite easy as well, judging and organization. And I think we set the tone quite well in the first week that we would just not be answering any questions yeah. about the workout. And only Mohammed yeah, Kassam yeah. asked. Atmosphere, so, <laughs> atmosphere every single week yeah. was, was yeah, awesome. It was like, really, really, cool. really good. And I think as well, like a lot of people came down just to support. I know, Boz, you brought your mum all the way over from Belgium. Like I think that's good commitment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really needed her. Yeah. I need her. It's cool the amount of people that are, are really excited <laughs> for it next year already. Yeah, I think that's like awesome as well. They've experienced it for sort of like the first time. Yeah. And obviously come across some things that they've probably not been able to do and some things that they've surprised themselves on and they're just super excited and motivated to train for next year. Yeah, I think, that's, I think it's really cool. I think I had about half a dozen people came up to me since the Open's finished and have said, I'm going to definitely do the scale version next year. And some of the people that did the scale version are going to do the other one. 
maybe a bit harsh making everyone finish the workout. No time cap for that workout. Some guys took about 20 minutes, no, 24 good. minutes. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Anyone seen the pregnant girls do this workout? No. Have you not seen it? I'm not sure no. who posted it. Basically, there's I saw two different videos of two chicks. Um, they did burpees. So they put two plates, two sets of plates, stacks of plates in front of them about a foot off the ground and then a gap for their bellies to fit in and then plates at the back as well. This one chick completed it in about 24 minutes wow. with the RX weight as well. Mm-hmm. Which it Baby looks, must have loved it. It looks really <laughs> weird. Like you, there's just this gap where the belly can go into but yeah, full, t- full participation. Phil, you finished up fifth? Yeah, uh, fourth. Fourth. Yeah. You went from fifth to fourth, which yeah. Obviously, congratulations. It's okay. Third year, fourth year as an individual. Fourth. Fourth year as an individual. So yes. everyone goes off to Madrid whilst me, Jonesy, and Ben <laughs> teach anyone who's left. But by the sounds of it, there's a shit ton of people <laughs> yeah. going to Madrid. <laughs> I have to dig out the podcast where we promise people different things. <laughs> <At> this, <laughs> stage, <laughs> at this stage, Claire. what I do need to know, folks, if you are going to Madrid, we're going to make T-shirts a different color for each day with one day everyone's name on it. So we'll have to figure out who's going and what sizes you need. So if you're going to Madrid and you want T-shirts, let me know. One day will be one color and named as well. So you have one color with boz on it yes black 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 <laughs> like my soul like your soul <laughs> on my day it's just tops off you just get tops like a, off. you just get a transfer you get that says tr- transfer <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's about 30 or 40 people going so we want to hear from you guys if you're going we want to get t-shirts done with the guys' names on it. And there is something about memberships, which I have to find out exactly what the <laughs> deal is. <laughs> we'll figure it out and I'll let you know next week, depending on how much financial damage that might cause me. That's the open. What happens next? Tomorrow morning, climbing Khalifa uh, Phil. Claire says before you move on from that, that they have to buy their tickets, remember? You need to buy tickets. On games.crossfit.com. There we go. Go there and buy your regional ticket. We're actually thinking to appoint a tour manager as well. I'm just working on that, who <laughs> will be the liaison. Claire is going to be daytime activities, and Anton's going to be evening activities. <laughs> right. <laughs> evening activities, I think. Uh, yeah, so there, 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 there'll be a lot going on. If you, if you are listening from around the world and you are going to go to Madrid just to spectate and you want to hook up with these guys, you want to wear T-shirts the same color as these guys, I think there's about 30 people going, so you three better do well. No yeah. problem. No problem. Easy. <laughs> Good. Climbing Cleefa. Climbing Cleefa tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, 10 o'clock. Ah. No, I don't want to talk about all the cheating stuff on the Open. Nah, it's finished now. Get over it. Finished. Yeah. Get over it. Get Climbing Cleefa tomorrow morning. Yeah. Tell us about o'clock. it. 10 o'clock. We've got, uh, we've got six. Have we got the full six teams registered down here now? Uh, I think so, yeah. Almost, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. can put a couple of spots available. If you still haven't signed up, then do. Yeah. And we'll get you into one of the teams. But we're going to try and climb the total height of the Burj Khalifa on the ropes that we've got at the gym as fast as we can, basically. Easy. One team from the UK have already done it. Yep. CrossFit Workshop, which incidentally is where I used to go to school. Yeah. And they did it in 37 minutes, minutes, right? minutes which yes, is yes. very good time. They had, I think, six or eight people on their team. So congratulations to those guys. There's two teams from another local gym, Rig CrossFit, who are doing the workout tomorrow morning as well at their gym. If you don't want to come and watch us and support us, go and see them. Yeah. They're, <laughs> apparently, they're nicer than we are anyway. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of comments on the Instagram post that I made. Like yeah. Loads of gyms want to like, get involved with it, so that'd be cool. Very cool. If you want to get involved with that, if you're not doing it tomorrow, that's fine. If you want to get involved in it at some stage, ben. gather six people. 10 people, right. maximum of 10 people, try and climb that rope. If it's 15 foot rope, it's 181.6 or 182 <laughs> ascents. And the time cap's supposed to be an it's hour. 181. 181 ascents. It's 181 point something, apparently. No? Yeah, we've put out the official as 181. Shit. We'll just not touch the top. Because it was like 830 <laughs> meters or 832 with like some stupid antenna on it. Right. So we got rid of the antenna. Do 181. <laughs> and obviously, and someone said this was pointing out the obvious, but yes. You can do it on a shorter rope, but just divide Too the more, rope yeah. by the foot. Someone actually gave me a hard time about that, but yeah. some, someone asked us, like, can I do it with a shorter rope? So that was actually yeah. the answer to that. What time are you going to start warming up, Ben? Yeah. Ben, uh, you're in our team. I'll be in at seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> yeah. seven. You do what? bicep curls to warm up. Yeah. yeah. One more thing as well, whilst we're telling you what's going on. 
classes on Saturday. All the classes will start at 9. So Pure Strength, Cardio Club, and Base Fitness will all start at 9 and run until 10. Red Zone Training starts at 10. Red Zone Training is relaunched. We'll talk about that next week. Questions? Any questions, Phil, from our live viewers? Savage wants to know, this is kind of going back to the, the open stuff, but he wants to know what your thoughts are. I guess the girls can maybe answer this. Um, on Jamie, Jamie Green winning the open and then deciding to go as team, would you do the same if you were in her position? Boss? No. But, no. boss. Well, it's taking into account the whole situation. Yeah, like, like they already yeah, yeah, decided like, last uh, year yeah, yeah, that they're okay, going like to go that, team. But for me, I would not go team. Yeah, I I myself probably wouldn't have because made the decision to go team no, in yeah, the first place same. if you knew if if you kind of knew yeah. how good yeah. you were. Yeah. But to, to, it's, to very, it's, very, cool, it's very cool yeah. that she committed. They committed to being sure. a team last year, and they're like yeah. a really cool mm. bunch of people. I, I I think all three of them are couples on the team, right? Yeah. So yeah. Kinda, yeah. Oh no, two uh, of them are couples, and then then two. No, three. I don't oh, think no, Natan is no. in the team. Oh, no. Natan's not in the no. team. Just I to put this in now. some context. Yeah, I think he is. Oh, he is, is he? Oh, well. To put this oh, in well, some well. context, the, our friends from CrossFit, yes, down the road in Abu Dhabi, they went to regionals as a team last year and were disqualified for a Inelig- minor ineligibility, te- ineligibility <laughs> where they had someone who was not living in the country and basically didn't follow the rules and they were disqualified. This year, one of their athletes, had the Jamie Green, has won the Open, which is incredible. It's she's won the so worldwide crazy. Open. crazy. She's yeah. beaten former champion. She's number one on the leaderboard, despite a slight penalty in the last workout. So she's done incredible, but is still sticking yeah. with her decision to go as team. When they were disqualified last year, they said, screw that, we're going to come back. And they've trained, obviously, yeah. reasonably hard. <laughs> Elliot finished eighth. Seven. No, he was fifth. I think. Was he fifth, fifth or sixth? Yeah, yeah. Anthony actually, right. Anthony actually had incredible score. Apart from the first one where he had an injury, yeah, and he could only do underhand pull-ups. Right, he still managed ten rounds of the workout, and all the rest he was like fifth, sixth, fifth, wow. third. Like so, so he would have been it. in the top two, maybe one first if he'd have really? sort of done as they're well as he could on, on that first, first one. So, so they've, got, they've got a top ten, if not podium games team. So I don't think there's any reason to doubt like why you would go team it's definitely not the easier option for yeah. them they're just looking to go and the wait. whole way as a team and enjoy the whole thing together I guess Mia what would you do yeah if I promised to go team I would go team yeah of course Jonesy team Ben I don't know yeah I'm just I don't know <laughs> I'd have to think about it yeah I'm do you, the same. Th- do you think she b- she would was kind of expecting to win the open I, maybe not I I mean, does I anyone d- expect to win the open no but I, I mean do you think I, I don't really know her that well. Like, was yeah. she expecting to be that she high? I expected it because she didn't do it that well in the Open last year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she climbed a lot yeah. in one yeah. year. Yeah. She yeah. was like 100. I don't believe that. Everyone, everyone, has, everyone knows how good you are. Like, you know if you're good and you know if you're not. She's done plenty of competition. She did the DFC last year. Yeah. She beat the top girls in the world at some events. Like, she knows how good she is. Right. Maybe she didn't think she was going to win the Open. Yeah. Like, you know, because you, you can't say before, and like you said, that I'm going to win this, but... She knows how good she is. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like so, she she could have made the decision back then whether she was going to go individual or not. I think she said that she's going to go individual next year. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting one. Well, best of luck to Yas. Good on Jamie Green for winning the Open yeah. worldwide. Lives in Abu Dhabi. Go and see her. Go and train with her. She might teach you how to go really fast because <laughs> she's yeah. apparently got very good at going very fast. <laughs> Here's a technical question. Ring muscle-ups, catch them high like an uprise or low for efficiency? That's actually from our friends at CrossFit Workshop. Anyone want to answer that? What we're talking about here is more a gymnastic one where you don't, the uprise, you just don't bend your arms in the muscle-up. Thoughts? I think if you have the skill to do the almost like an uprise, yeah. then it's beneficial to do it. But for me, I try to do it, but wait, oh, yeah, it takes just you. more energy for me just to yeah. get that good kip and get that high All up. All the way up, yeah. Yeah. Especially when I'm tired. Like when yeah. you're fresh, the first reps, you'll, you almost do it. But it's then easier, the yeah. second round, when you go back to the rings, it's much harder once your core is tired to keep yeah. that good form. You see more so, girls doing it, like Sam Briggs definitely doesn't pass through as much a portion of the dip yeah. and a couple of others. Is it and not so many guys? I don't, I, I don't know that as many guys have got the, uh, the gymnastic background that a lot of the girls seem to come into CrossFit right. from, maybe. Right. But I just, it's one of those things that I, I don't think it's something that people have to, it's, it's, a, it's a good skill to be able to do yeah. because if you can do them, then obviously you've got a very effective gymnastic kit so that 
when you are tired in a workout, then you should be able to do regular ring muscle-ups where you catch at the bottom of the dip quite well. Yeah. But very few people that I've seen do that, like catching them high in the dip efficiently during a workout. Yeah. Most of the time, it actually looks like they're trying so hard to kip and do that, and they still end up catching it not high enough in the, yeah. with their yeah. arms straight, straight and doing a dip anyway. Yeah. So it ends up being way more way more tiring. Yeah. I think that I think that's it's, it's, cool, line, it's cool to it? be able to do it, and that if you've got a really good gymnastic background, then it's pretty good because if you've got a workout that says got a lot of pressing movements in as well, yeah. then you can save your arms by doing almost that front uprise every time. Yeah. But I don't. I would just. I don't. I don't spend too much time practicing that way. I don't think there's many workouts where I would need to use that. I think for efficiency, and people that are starting out, should think about catching it in a dip. Yeah, is my opinion. This is quite a good question from Brooksy, as always, and thank you. Long and short of it, it's been well documented. We all know the benefits of CrossFit. Uh, in other words, if a professional sportsman were to leave their sport and want to go to the games, which sport do you think would have prepared them the best, Ben? Uh, I would say gymnastics or weightlifting. Yeah. Very, very simply, they, they're two of the, uh, the common themes that come up in CrossFit. Yeah. Um, I, I think from a gymnastics or weightlifting background, you're, you're in with a good, good start. I wonder how many professional gymnasts or people that are sort of trying to pursue a professional career in weightlifting have ever thought about it. Be interesting, eh? Yeah. I think weightlifting guys generally are not or haven't been that happy about what CrossFit's done to weightlifting, though. They've got a little bit. I, I think they do. They, because at the start, so much they more, hated it. Yeah. yeah, there's so much more attention now to, yeah, to weightlifting. To weightlifting. Yeah. People would... Like how many people watch the weight like the world championships yeah. weightlifting now compared to? I agree with you. It, every single CrossFitter almost looks to yeah. those yeah. championships. But at the start, it wasn't. It was they were upset. That yeah, because we, we do like fast reps yeah. and we just do yeah. like retarded reps. And I think a lot of CrossFitters do these retarded stupid, reps. yeah retarded yeah. reps yeah, where they're going to injure themselves yeah. and they don't really know how it comes. Yeah, but. Yeah, I think I think those sports probably probably the best. I think any like sport that like people shouldn't come from, or what's the hardest crossover to CrossFit? Oh, there is one. Rugby, darts. rugby's rugby. Quite, darts. Long, 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 I think <laughs> darts, the hardest yeah. is like long distance running. Like yeah. extreme endurance athletes yeah. will never. Okay, not never. Yeah. But if you were really good and you're at the top of your game on extreme endurance, like running, yeah, I don't think you'll ever be good at CrossFit. Sam yeah. Briggs. You, you, is she, I don't not she, yeah. more like a, a really think she was, like, I don't know. So high up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's, oh, yeah. Like, that's She just did it, strength. but she wasn't, like, a professional in it. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh. But, like, it's just so much harder to get stronger than it is to get fitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And as a I stereotype, agree. those guys that are doing, like, endurance stuff like that are usually not very Probably strong. Probably cyclists as well. I mean, they've got incredibly I strong like, legs. Like, um... Like a track and field, like yeah. uh, multi-event athletes, someone like Jess- Jessica Ennis. Yeah, like I think she'd be incredible if she moved to CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, because like, they're already like disciplined in a lot of different areas and yeah. extremely mm-hmm. athletic. Obviously, I think that'd be pretty cool to see someone like her like give CrossFit a go. Question from Claire Noble, who's actually sitting in our office. No, she's not. super creepy. <laughs> Just behind us, <laughs> no, right behind. Not. Doesn't have a job. <laughs> Unemployable. <laughs> she What's says, in a fasted state, <laughs> she's doing some gardening. In a fasted state, what is fueling the body? Fat? Question. Muscle? Question. Something else. Jonesy? Yeah. Oh. I, uh, I think it's fat, but I don't know. I guess you've got to be a little bit careful that you're not doing it because you can be at risk of burning muscle if you're training in a fasted state all the time so yeah most um, of the time it's it's fat but i think one of one of the problems here is that if people don't have that level of fat in them then it starts to chew up muscle that's the problem what am i doing yeah i'm wiping blood off my leg i looked at it i looked at his leg and it just started bleeding and her black soul so (laughs) i mean i think that's one of the problems you're right jonesy like a lot of the time it's fat that fuels the body that's how i fuel my body most of the time but if you're not taking in that stuff and that's where that's where people go wrong i think in when they start intermittent fasting and they start weight loss is that they chuck fat out the window and then their muscle starts to go through the floor as well what was fueling your body this weekend <laughs> we never really <laughs> spoke we have about to ask Steve Steve P 
Pengelos. Pengelos. He was in here this morning. He, yeah, Disaster. he hasn't been in that much. <laughs> and <laughs> what a Noble, carbohydrate. Noble <laughs> follows us up with, with another question. She says, how long does it take before your body reacts to not getting food? Hours and days. I'm not actually sure I fully understand that. Because... I guess to get used to intermittent fasting, Jonesy, you've done it a bit. Yeah. I guess to sort of, a, 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 and that's maybe what she means, to, to sort of get into the rhythm of it. It probably takes about a week or so, doesn't it? And then you yeah. sort of start, you stop that feeling hungry in the morning. Yeah, and I think some people that go to that 12-hour fast and even like sometimes the 24-hour fast too early into it, that, that's when they struggle. you got to like even build it up to eight hours or yeah, I think eight to that, 12 at first. And, exactly. Yeah, I, I know that, yeah. Jess... Is back on intermittent fasting. She back on it. Yeah, she went off it. She went off it. Now she's back into it. She's also on, and, and I, I don't know if we've spoken about this before on the show, but she's also on the lemon and water every morning, which someone asked me about during the week on my Snapchat as well, which I don't get involved in. But. I used to have that, like, you know, before the um, the massive eating the yeah. window. I'd yeah. have a little bit of that before, like a massive feed, because right. I found that it digested a lot better. Helps. But I mean, it helps a lot in digestion, they reckon, but she was having it instead of coffee, and I just told her to have Stick coffee. Stick to your black coffee. Stick to your black coffee. Phil, you had a question? Uh, Savage just wanted to know, um, they were on about the um, body analysis machine. Yes. And wanted to know if it's going to give you a bad result if you're doing it after a workout, because usually yeah. we recommend to do it before a workout, right? Yeah. Before the workout is, is obviously a lot better. Is it going to give you a bad reading? It's just going to be slightly different. The, the reason why I tell people to do it before and in the morning is because then you're in the same sort of fasted state the whole time. You don't have to be fully fasted, but it's the same the whole time. If a client comes in in the evening and does it and has had something different for lunch and had different levels of hydration, then it could all be different. That's why actually the best time is in the morning. Anton says he has spare accommodation for regionals if anyone needs it <laughs> i'm not sure and he signs off by <laughs> saying night manager long is his title <laughs> so if you wow. want to stay <laughs> anton he's night manager and he has some spare accommodation somewhere along the way i'm not sure if holly's staying with him or not but if she is that's that's not very good <laughs> Another thing that's got been sent through to us is actually, it's, it's a really long one, but it's really interesting. I'll just try and get the gist of it over. It's from Jamie over in Doha, Qatar. Apparently, a, which I haven't seen, a, a video stroke documentary of a 14-year-old girl has been released somewhere, and it goes through the whole thing. Essentially, what he's saying, without going into too much detail here, he's saying, what do you guys think about people pursuing CrossFit as almost their dream as a professional athlete. I mean, we see it a lot. I guess, Ben, you, you came through sort of a strong football background. You see footballers at some at 22, some at 32. They're pretty thick. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, they're they unemployable almost. Yeah. It happened a lot in rugby. I know they set up a professional players association. What do we think about this? And as well, one of the things that I think came out in this film is that there was a lot of tension between the parents. They ended up getting divorced all to help the kid pursue their dreams. Thoughts? Scholarships, no. yeah. Scholarships? Scholarships will be good. Yeah. Because I... Um, and, sorry, mate. That's what he actually said, and that's a really good point to kick off. Should or will CrossFit HQ care? So CrossFit HQ could almost develop a scholarship system yeah. if they wanted. I mean, that's how, that's how young athletes have been helped in the past, isn't it? We saw um, the club that I was playing for, Ponsonby, they gave us scholarships. We yeah. saw some of the guys that were like really like keen on their rugby, and, but they'll drop out of their like uni studies like three months into it or mm, really? barely do a semester. And yeah. Just because that was their dream, you know? They just wanted to focus on their rugby. But yeah. like you say, I mean, if an injury comes up or whatever, yeah. then they're... So they would only be allowed to continue playing if they were also in the education program. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of binding. Yeah. What have you seen in the UK? Well, it was in, the same in, in the UK. Um, when I signed my contract, it was based on that we had to go to college uh, one day a week. Uh, we could pick what we wanted to study. Yeah. Um, but we had to be there. And right. if, if we weren't, then it would be obviously detrimental to our, to our contract. We'd be right. going against our contract. And did some guys not do the study part and some then, guys then just then found penalized. it so hard they they, really? they picked very very they were told basically to to pick really really easy uh <laughs> subjects <laughs> public <laughs> services i think <laughs> three or four so, of them so, social studies but social, social studies, studies yeah but the, the, these guys are 
they've come through school and they've just not been very intelligent yeah, basically yeah, their yeah. football has been their dream they've not right. been intelligent and they, yeah they've they've ended up kind of working i think two or three of them are working on the train tracks one or two are plumbers which is great yeah uh, and and great that they work in but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not you see, it's hard though like with some, I, I know from my own experience it's probably not to those extremes but like i don't know when, when i just kind of first started this like the crossfit thing and just immediately it was just i was just obs- i was just obsessed with it it's all i thought about and i yeah i, I had a a job that was like, oh, I should really kind of keep this sort of desk job and yeah. things like that, and end up having getting told that you, know, you really should probably shouldn't be working here anymore because all you do is check CrossFit and <laughs> like you know, all you, you're trying to. I was I want you know always changing my hours, trying to change my contract so I could leave and go and do CrossFit coaching or leave early to go to the gym and just yeah, it's really hard. Like if you so got essentially the dream, you lost the job. Well, yeah. Right. Like, that you hated I just anyway, didn't want to do it. I just, yeah, like, yeah. All, all I ever, all I thought about was was CrossFit and wanting to be really good at it. Yeah. And it's very hard to think about, you know, what are you going to do after it? Like, yeah. it's actually, actually quite fortunate that in CrossFit, if you're if you're good and you're also can also as well as being a good athlete, you can develop into a good coach. And there's a lot of job opportunities yeah. available. Yeah. Which I, I'm not sure is the case in things like football and rugby because. The amount of it's it's quite hard. The amount of players that they only need one or two coaches. They're not right. all gonna mm. like. Okay, you can be a coach as well. Yeah. Like, and there's a lot, lot more people that play football and do CrossFit. Yeah. I think right. it's a lot harder for that. It, it was just fortunate that, as I well as being able to do it as a sport, I could also take it on as a job, which allowed you to train it as well. And I guess those opportunities in something like <clears throat> in something like CrossFit are have been a lot more as it's grown from very small to quite big very fast. But yeah. I guess they'll they'll sort of breakdown as yeah, well at some, like, yeah at some point in the, in the next sort of five probably, years yeah, there's yeah, going to exactly. be 20 people in your gym that want that have that dream of wanting to go to regionals you yeah. can't employ them all like yeah, yeah. i was kind of fortunate that you know, it was well, four, i could get four, rid of the cleaners four, and four years ago when i start <laughs> when i started <laughs> yeah. when that sort of started for me yeah so. boss i dropped out of college just because i like crossfit so much more and i had to make a decision i couldn't train that much work and go to school yeah so i just made a decision like okay i'm not gonna do school anymore i can still go to school when i'm 30 or 35 if i really want to have a degree yeah i think it's always possible to study but there's just this amount of time to be this athlete i want to be or like you don't have that many years to be at the top i guess it's a i guess that from from what you guys have just said and i sort of agree as well there and i never regretted it like still now and i haven't regretted how many times have you looked up online like study courses and stuff that (laughs) (laughs) sometimes we have to write an article then i'll 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 open my laptop yeah but i i guess maybe in crossfit where we're getting to is right now you could potentially go after that dream and also end up being a coach at the end of it yeah but i guess in in a lot of sports it's very tough Mm. mia yes (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah. What but, do you think? Well, I had a great career at IKEA before I I stopped of course, to, to be a CrossFit <laughs> coach. But like for me, it was the same. I didn't know if I was gonna quit at IKEA because it went really well. I was gonna be the kitchen manager, and yeah. and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop just to CrossFit. Yeah. Um, they were really mad at you. You said. Yeah, they were really mad at me. Really. Because they gave me time but off. You worked there for a long time, right? Yeah, and they gave me time off. Yeah. Because I had to move to Malmö during like the Open to be yeah. with the team and yeah. everything. Yeah. So they gave me time off, but they thought I was going to come back, of course. So when I came back and my my boss quit because I was going to take her job. Yeah. And then I came back and say I want to quit. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So the first day I came back, I just said, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm not, not coming interested. back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to leave for CrossFit. Very tough. But for me, it was the same. Like the Carmen said, I was going through my mind. Like, I can go back to Ikea any day I want and, like, continue my career there. But I can't, like, go Ikea now and then think I can go get good in CrossFit. I guess you two are sort of... You won't won't go back to Ikea, though, now. No, but if I want to, I can. I know you want to, but, like... I think you've got to to make... Like, you say about, oh, they need a job and they need this, but you've got to make something happen for yourself. Like, we exercise. Yeah. Like... I stopped. I stopped like thinking about a career because I wanted to do exercise. Yeah, and I've been all around the world doing it. I took an opportunity. I messaged a guy on Facebook and asked if I could go. I'll pay to go 
and coach for him yeah. in Oslo. Yeah, yeah. And from on the back of that, he invited me on a tour around Europe where I met you. Yeah. And then six months after that, I get invited to go to a job in Dubai because yeah. I do exercise. Yeah. You've got to make things happen for yourself. Like, if, well, no matter what you do, if you do football, yeah. like, those guys have such, like, a massive, like, influence in the media and, like, all these people that are just in, in love with them. They could do whatever they wanted but to do you create think it's a career different? out of it. Like, you guys are... are for example, you guys are all around 25. This is a 14-year-old kid. And what we're getting now, we're getting, like, what you guys had three or four years ago, the kids are getting exposed to earlier. So we're getting a scenario like we've got in football of, like, previously there was there was no teams. Like, now you've got an open and acrostic games that's for, I, I don't know what the youngest age is. I, think it's I just think it's very 14. important. Yeah. Very important that the kid wants it and not yeah. so much the parents because yeah. I think a lot of parents... They want that for their kid. Yeah. Like, oh, I have this kid and yeah. I want it to be an athlete, the thing that I could never be or something. Yeah, and right. then they try to push it on the kid and then the kid yeah. likes it, but then they push it too much and then it's just, and then it's the just. Is, yeah, 14 year olds change their mind. When I was 14, I wanted to be a professional football player. Yeah. When I was yeah. 17, I wanted to be a professional rugby player. When I was 21, I wanted to do CrossFit. And I was obsessed <laughs> with each one. Man. I was obsessed, <laughs> but you know, I was like four or five years on each one. And I was yeah. obsessed with each one and put yeah. everything I had into it. Yeah. And yeah, it depends whether that's what what the kid wants 100%. Yeah. And then it's the same advice. Like, go for it. If you're 14 years old, then by the time you're 20, you're probably going to be winning the games. Can like, you ever see CrossFit and or companies doing a scholarship scheme like Jonesy started out with there? What so, is there any benefit way, for what? CrossFit? Like, you know, this... This 14-year-old, uh, as I said, I haven't seen the video, but let's presume they don't really want to go to school. At 16 or 15 anyway, in a lot of countries, you can stop school. So the kid falls out of school. But there's financial problems. The parents split up. So CrossFit come in and say, you keep going to school. We'll sponsor you in a cer- to a certain way, but you have to yeah. keep going to school. It would, it I don't think CrossFit would ever do that. They love mm. their money too much. <laughs> I think it would, it would solve a lot of health issues as well if you were, t- if you were getting... If you, the reason to go to school and get an education was to that you were fit and healthy, yeah, and exercise. Yeah. Like, how many problems would that solve? Yeah, Ben, you've come from a school side. Any kids? Any kids that you see, especially over here, I guess, that are torn between this. I know Gem set up an, an academy yeah. for to develop athletes, but are we seeing this problem? Like, is it a wider problem? Um, it's, it's depends on on kind of the talent and the how how much the the children are, are willing to work right uh, i mean at, at the academy they 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 might be or they, they think they are the best in dubai w- whereas if they go to the uk and play soccer or rugby against people of the same age in in other countries yeah they get absolutely annihilated really and it's uh, and it's a, it's a it's a wake-up for them a good one uh, a, a really good one yeah. Yeah, w- yeah which they need but because dubai is a very small bubble yeah um they, they seem to to believe that they are they are better than do you than think what that's it a lot of the time like like people like you said Phil oh, you want to be a footballer that that's a dream like how realistic is it do you, you want to be this or that do you think sometimes these kids are not just told straight like they're not like and yeah, but h- how much stuck. responsibility but is it like you see a kid and I, I don't know if this has happened to you mate I, I hope not but you've you've taught for a long time you see a kid ten years ago. And you might have turned around to us and said, this kid's not overly talented at anything. But then five years later, the kid's somehow matured and grown. And, and, and has that happened at all? Uh, well, I, and I'm not going to confess that I, that I taught them. Um, yeah, but yeah. When, in my first year of teaching, I was in uh, a school in Wales which, yeah. which had Dan Bigger and Liam Williams. They well uh, sure, they're both playing for, <laughs> for they're both playing rugby for Wales. So, oh rugby. Uh, yeah, which is not, not great at the moment. Did they play in the Six Nations that they England did, won? Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. And in that game. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> Incredible. Wow. Um but but those guys, da- Dan Bigger was someone who everybody knew was gonna be a professional rugby right, player. Right. Uh, whereas Liam was just kind just of just a no one. Just a, he was a year younger than Dan. Right. Nobody really knew him. He kept himself to himself. Yeah. Um, actually my last game of rugby before I moved to Dubai I played against Liam. Right. Um, wow. just in a in a local for his local team. Right. And then over the next four or five years he just grew and, and improved and yeah. worked really, really hard and got a lot better. I think it's a super, super tough one and Folks, go and have a look at that video. It sounds like a, a really interesting video and, and, and a good subject as well. So thanks a lot, Jamie, for that. 
Phil's got, got a, a question. Few, like. If you're watching online, and there is loads of you watching online, <laughs> you should have some manners and you should send us a question. <laughs> Adnan's asked a couple. I'll see which one's go first. Um, how often do you see people start CrossFit and then not carry on? And can you usually tell these people are going to be straight away? <laughs> Jonesy has to answer <laughs> yeah, 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 this one. Yeah, yeah. This is your question. I think I've seen quite a few in the past. So <laughs> they sort of rock out. But, <laughs> no, no. Um, I can't really think of anyone's names. That well, don't say names. No. Yeah, I, I, I think there are quite a few out there that give it a go. They either think yeah. that, you know, I've got, I've got the strength here, you know, I, I might look all right, and then they just, they just can't use their bodies properly, and then they just... It's just quite humbling for them, isn't it? Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, yeah, so... And then maybe, like... I'm not saying a major injury comes up, but maybe a little niggle comes up, yeah. and then they just think, oh, no, this isn't yeah. for me. This is dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Um, but... I don't know. Can, can you sort of tell? Sometimes, sometimes you think, like, oh, this person's not going to come back. And yeah. I think most of the time, if we said that, then we're usually right. But yeah. then sometimes you're just completely su- shocked by someone and yeah. you know, you, you're really happy yeah, that you it's are. True. But it's I think in general, a lot of people that do start are kind of, that's, that's it for them. That they don't really go back to it. I think it has a pretty high... I think of the ones that like are really quick to ask about the price of things. That's yeah. where I just feel like, oh, okay, just your focus is on yeah, that. Yeah. What I, I I quite like it though when when someone's walked in and maybe I've taught them in their first class or the first couple of classes, and I'm like, no way, this guy's just yeah. it's not going to work. And they're they're here like six months later, and they're absolute legends. And yeah. I actually normally so just change, go up to them they? and I tell them, I, I I will say to them, I say, I taught your first class, yeah. and I actually didn't think you'd hang around, but you know they've lost like eight kilos they can actually yeah. do something yeah. now and i think that's that's really cool as well but i think most of the people that come in you can sort of you can sort of judge i think like you said jonesy it's it's based on what questions people ask yeah I think if you're so. asking stupid questions then silly questions just it's yeah. not gonna uh, more than one <laughs> more than more than one <laughs> we'll kick you out <laughs> <laughs> is there more there yeah um i don't add, add another one it's kind of going back to the um to the open again and do you think that athletes are moving into this region um, for a better chance at qualifying uh, for regionals? No. I think this region is getting a lot stronger. I think people have moved here for work and for what it brings and I think it's not easy to qualify. I think yeah. previously, I think two or three years ago, potentially, but I think it's... it's I mean, mate, you, you nearly qualified through Asia and you know, Eric Carmody went to the games and did reasonable and yeah. and is good. So and I think if you compare a lot of the a lot of the the scores and stuff, I think it's I, I don't think people I think people are moving here because somehow the the gyms are, are here and the lifestyle allows it and maybe Europe's just not got good weather. I it's think one of those, the one of those thing, places, yeah, it's one of those places at the moment that a lot of gyms are, are opening up and, and people yeah. have uh, quite a bit of money to open up new yeah. gyms and hire five or six coaches at once and it's yeah. a good experience for people to move into the region like especially yeah. the, the Middle East part like. didn't you have like three jobs or two jobs yeah I like th- I work in three different gyms but also yeah. just the opportunity to train with different yeah in Belgium yeah. to train with other good athletes because what they do here is they'll get good athletes from all over the world to one gym yeah. Yeah. and you you have the opportunity to train with some of the best in the world and maybe it's not always possible in your own country or in your yeah. own gym yeah. I think as well if I think you're not living in Sweden I think all, all, all the regions are incredibly and, hard to qualify and, from yeah. and they yeah. kind of make it appropriate with the amount of people that do qualify yeah through like we only get 10 yeah um, yeah exactly that's that's one thing as well yeah. you've you got to make sure you're in the top 10 yeah so no so, and then one more uh, that Savage asked um, I have another question. Do you me. think that the label fittest, it, he said fittest on the world, but the label is fittest on earth, um, is accurate for the person who wins the CrossFit, the CrossFit <laughs> Games? Yes. Yes. There we go. I what think that's do you think the so? only. Which other disciplines would argue with it? The main discipline that argues with it is the one that you pulled up before as not being very good at coming into CrossFit, which is the endurance world. They yeah. hate it. Yeah. And I've seen yeah. so much kickback from it. How can you say that, you know, in fronting one, once, twice, whatever, how can you say that? He can't even do an Ironman. And they think Ironman's the hardest test. I mean, Ironman's damn hard. But as I, I was interviewing some people the other day, and they rightly said it, like, you can, you can doggy paddle. Now, Ironman, a triathlon guys are going to get really freaked out. But you can doggy paddle. You can then get a bike. 
and just spin at like 20, 25 k's an hour, and then you can walk the marathon and you complete an Ironman. Does yeah. that make you the fittest person in the world? No. I suppose it, uh, like, I'd like <laughs> them to like, t- just invite them. Invite yeah. an Ironman and put an Ironman as the first event as the CrossFit Games. Yeah. A full Ironman. That would be quite cool. And then cool, do the next that? three days of the CrossFit Games and see yeah. if the Ironman. Has yeah. anything better than a first place finish? Well, apart from the that's first, the main the first kick day. back. I've seen a bit of kickback from the gyms you used to go to, Jonesy, just the bodybuilders. Yeah, they don't like it. Oh, no. <laughs> they're like, get out of my gym. I'm like, you get out. <laughs> they're kind of clever. They're kind of clever because they like the CrossFit actually defined the word fitness. Yeah, like they they created their own definition, definition for it. Yeah. So like it's it's fittest on earth by their own definition. Yeah, exactly. So like a lot of people would just say, no, you're just the best at CrossFit, but you're pretty fit if you're good at CrossFit. Like you can do a lot of stuff. You can do a lot of different <laughs> stuff, and some of it well, and some of and it not very well. You look good as well. Yeah, you look pretty ripped, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any <laughs> more questions that we need to answer? We're nearly at an hour. All good. All good. Thanks a lot for joining us. If you watched, you come can Come tomorrow and shout at us. Come tomorrow yep. morning, 10 o'clock, Climbing Khalifa. Come on Saturday, all classes at 9 o'clock, and then Red Zone starts at 10. Send us your questions. Winning at innerfight.com. Ben, thanks for taking the time ben. to join us. We look forward to you being with us a lot more often. That's why you Can't did wait. curls before. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Mia's in the way. Get your little arms. And now Mia's so in the way. And Mia's yeah. head's in the way. <laughs> Mia's. And Spice head's in front of him on the video. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> for an hour. Like this. Folks, send us your questions. Thanks a lot for all your support. Thanks for listening to us. Until next time, take care. Thanks, guys. Clocks it all. <laughs>